All right, hello everybody. This is Niklas Hoschenbeet and today I would like to show you what I consider to be the best game of the US Women's Champion 2018, Nazi Paikitze. And I think her best game was in round number six against Sabina Franceska Feuser, actually the reigning US chess champion, the champion of 2017. So let's get to it. And before we begin though, What's kind of funny is, and also why I'm wearing this hoodie, both of these players, Foljur and Baikitze, studied with me at UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and we played on the same team. <laughs> so, well, funny coincidence, and let's get to the game. Before we begin though, as always, the comment of the day, it's by Arno, and he says, thank you for an interesting video. It's really interesting to see how a grandmaster thinks about positions. It would be nice if you would play on lead chess because there's a possibility to have a simultaneous exhibition so that the viewers have the chance for a better result against you. And there was also another few other comments about a subscriber tournament on lead chess. So I'm curious what you guys think. Would you prefer a simul or a subscriber tournament? Do you have any preference? Do you not care? Let me know in the comments. That would be interesting to me. All right, now let's get on to the game. Foyzer with the white pieces, Paikitsu with the black pieces, d4, knight f6, and we see the, what is this variation called again? Mm. Slipping my mind right now. If I, if I, Ragozin, Ragozin variation, there we go. But funnily enough, if the bishop g5 now transposes to the Vienna variation, which can also, start if black takes immediately on c4. And I think this move, this transposition, confused white because it seemed that Sabina was not that familiar with this line. So e4 is the main move and now here white has two choices, e5 was played in the game but the more popular move is bishop takes c4. So let's see, e5 in the game becomes incredibly sharp and if you don't know the theory here that well with either color, it becomes difficult. So let's see what happens. C takes d4. And now e takes f6 is already a rare move. The main move here is queen a4 check and then goes knight c6, queen side castle and position is just crazy. And a lot of theory but it seems black is okay. So takes on f6. White is up a piece temporarily but both the bishop and the knight are attacked so black will regain the piece. And here, I believe knight, knight takes d4 would have been best. Just to give back the piece here, black can take immediately on g5 or take on c3 first. And white has compensation here for the pawn. He can, for example, well, he can take immediately. He can also play a move like h4 here, and the position is roughly equal. After bishop h4, it already becomes tricky for. White, of course, black cannot take on c3 immediately, then white takes on d8, takes on f6 with check, and now doesn't take on h8 because c takes b2, check would be unpleasant, but just takes with the pawn, attacks the bishop, rook still attacked, and black wins material. But black has time here because the knight is pinned on c3 and cannot move, and black can just take this knight later. a3, bishop a5, and here knight takes d4, and then I think the position becomes very difficult for white. Bishop takes c4 had to be played. d takes c3, and now b4, queen takes d1, rook takes d1, bishop d8, defending the pawn on f6. And at the moment, black is up two pawns, but he will lose this one on c3. And white, of course, has to defend probably for the rest of the game, but this was objectively the best chance, objectively. Okay, so let's see what happened in the game. Knight takes d4. Now obviously black has regained the piece, plus he's a pawn up. No, two pawns up. Now he's one pawn up. And knight f5, a very nice move, hitting the bishop on h4. Also offering the queen trade. If queen takes d8, then black takes with the bishop and defends the pawn on f6. So white played bishop b5 check, king e7, and now queen a4. And here, I like the sequence now. Black took on h4, 
queen takes h4 and now this is a very nice move i like this move a lot so stop the video right now and try to figure out what black played right here okay so queen d5 those are the moves you want to play centralizing the queen of course the queen cannot be taken because the knight is still pinned and black is threatening to take on g2 as well as to take on b5 so white is not in time to castle because here white loses a piece and that means white is in big trouble here obviously Pojo went b4, queen e5 check, now the king has to go to d2 to defend the knight on c3 and now the king, the white king is also in the center, the black king actually feels much safer behind these pawns than the white king who's pretty exposed. Rook d8 check, king goes to c2 and now simply the bishop retreats to b6, queen takes h7, white picks up a pawn, the material is equal but this is not of importance here most important in this position as it is in many positions is the king safety king safety should always be your first priority it doesn't matter if you're up 100 pieces if your king is checkmated then you still lose the game so always make sure your king is safe and here the black king is much safer than the white king bishop d4 rook a d1 now queen comes back to c7 attack the knight rook to d3 is defending the knight but e5 and I like this move opening up the bishop so the bishop can also come into play and that's what my coach like to say all the pieces want to be invited to a party and the bishop and the rook are not participating yet and they will soon and then it will look very grim for white f4 bishop e6 f takes e5 white tries to open up the black king but this just doesn't work the bishops are monsters on e6 and e5 and now the last piece comes into action and it is all over for white for now still holding on but this will not last for long a6 opening up the square for the queen on c4 and the queen is ready to come into the position rook takes d8 and now nice intermediate check always when your opponent takes a piece make sure for one moment that you don't have any intermediate moves that maybe can improve your situation and here it is the case white black doesn't have to take back immediately can give this check once again made possible due to the fact that the knight is pinned this time by the rook now king to d1 and now black takes back with check so even more powerful and here if the king goes to e1 or c1 black can just go queen d2 and pick up the rook so white played rook d3 but now bishop g4 check and white is being checkmate very soon here Foyzor resigned after king e1 there's bishop takes c3 check followed by queen e2 checkmate all right so very convincing win here by nazi Paikitze. and i think a lot of this is due to the fact that the opening was very sharp and seemed white didn't really know the theory that well so this of course can be dangerous if you're playing theoretical sharp lines then you need to be sure to know what's going on otherwise you can end in a bad position pretty early in the game. All right, so Nazi won the tournament by beating Any Wang in the playoffs. Very exciting, won ultimately in the Armageddon game, showed great perseverance and congratulations at this point, Nazi. Um, well, Nazi is always just doing extraordinarily well in the US Championships. She played, she played four times and she's won twice and twice she was second. So amazing performance once more. And you guys, if you have any questions about the game or anything, let me know in the comments. And then I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.